The city of Hobart manages 4,600 hectares of bushland reserve. This includes some of the larger reserves such as Knock Lofty, Queen's Domain, Waterworks and Ridgeway, the foothills of Mount Wellington, and we have a number of smaller reserves in Sandy Bay such as Macaulay Avenue and Edith Avenue. So the bushland reserves in the city of Hobart are quite unique for a number of reasons. It's quite exceptional to have the quality of vegetation that we have in proximity to a capital city. It's also unique in that it's unusual for it to not be managed by a national estate, so such as a national park. So for a local government to have such a large amount of high quality vegetation under its management is quite unique. In January 2019, the City of Hobart endorsed our Biodiversity Action Plan. This plan guides our work in our bushland reserves for the next five to ten years to preserve and maintain the biodiversity in the city. This management it isn't by luck, and it's by good management. And to ensure that we manage all of the competing demands and maintain this biodiversity for perpetuity, we need prioritised management. So the reserve system we have in the city of Hobart protects a number of different ecosystems. We're lucky that we have grasslands on Queen's Domain, we have dry grassy woodlands in Knock Lofty, and this goes up to wet foothills and alpine vegetation on Mount Wellington. This diversity of landscape gives us a diversity of native plants and animals that's quite unique to Hobart. We all think that a national park estate is the only location where wildlife can be preserved, but there's opportunities closer to a city and the nature reserves we have here in the city of Hobart are of really high quality and support a number of species that are declining in other areas. For instance, the eastern barred bandicoot is now disappearing from its natural habitat through the Midlands system we're finding it in people's backyards and in our reserve system in the city of Hobart. There's a number of threats to biodiversity that are present in any nature reserve, but there's a number of challenges that present themselves in proximity to a city. So we have a lot of people who are very close to nature reserves that can get there very quickly. So the sheer number of people that visit that reserve and come through that reserve is a threat. Um, we have a number of tracks and trails, roads and easements that provide access for a number of services as well as recreation and that also has habitat fragmentation implications. We have people who own cats and dogs and for our threatened wildlife fauna in Tasmania they probably present the greatest risk in terms of a predator in the absence of foxes. We have street lighting, we have traffic on the roads, all of this has an impact upon our native flora and fauna that you might not see in a remote native natural reserve. So one of the greatest threats from having a peri-urban nature reserve based system is weeds. So we have thousands of landholders who literally have their back door on our reserve and so there's a whole potential of garden plants that are just waiting to become the next weed, plus all of the existing weeds that we already need to deal with. The City of Hobart's worked extremely hard in the last decades to remove weeds and continues to remove weeds from our bushland reserve. The Biodiversity Action Plan identifies key areas for weed removal and also high threat weeds to our biodiversity hotspots. This helps us to prioritise where we do that weed work and what weeds we work on first. So there's a number of high threat weeds that we have in the city of Hobart. One of those is orange hawkweed. It's only found in four places in Australia, in New South Wales, Alpine National Park in Victoria and in the Central Highlands and in Ferntree in Tasmania. This is a high threat weed to alpine and subalpine ecosystems and so we've actually got an opportunity to eradicate that from the city of Hobart. So we've been working with people in their backyards up in Ferntree, um, identifying and controlling this particular weed. One of the opportunities of having a bushland reserve system so close to the city is the number of people we can actively get involved in their management. So one of the most popular volunteer programs by far at the City of Hobart is the Bush Care Program, where we have um, activities every weekend. People come out to do weed removal, they do wildlife monitoring, planting of native plants and looking after our bushland reserves. So the fire and biodiversity team at the City of Hobart needs to manage the risk of bushfire as well as the protection of biodiversity. So one of the um, critically important things we do, I guess, to manage fire risk in the city is fuel reduction burning. And whilst the Australian ecosystems have adapted to fire, we still need to manage that quite carefully 
to make sure that we don't lose particular plants and species. We don't burn too frequently, we don't burn too hot, we don't burn too cold. And we also protect important areas from wildfire that could eliminate particularly threatened species. So in addition to the threats that we have, the known threats that we have to our bushland reserves, such as habitat fragmentation, invasive weeds, pest plants and animals, have, we have an unknown threat, I suppose, to some extent, which is climate change. So it will exacerbate all of the existing threats that we already know about. Um, but some of the outcomes are unknown, what impact it will have. So the best thing we can do to provide our bushland reserves with the resilience for that unknown is to make sure we have large, intact, connected tracts of vegetation of high quality. But it's not just our bushland reserve systems that are important for this, it's people's backyards and private land as well. Wildlife will need to be able to move through and adapt to changing climate and they may need to move through people's backyards and they might find sanctuary in people's backyards. And so everyone will play a part in how we protect biodiversity in the city.